Hi and welcome to my sim hangar. In today's video I want to do a short tutorial how I build basic instruments from a simulator. As you can imagine there are simple to build instruments and some a bit more complex. Today I want to focus on the main building process which is always the same, independent of the complexity of the gauge. A project like the EPU fuel gauge is one of those simpler instruments and consists of the following parts. The outer hull and the inner parts, which are the glass, the needle and shaft, which is a 2 mm steel wire, the spacer for the needle, a faceplate, the LED plate for backlighting the lettering on the faceplate, a coupler to connect the needle shaft and motor shaft with different diameters, the motor plate with the motor that drives the needle, and finally the plate with the connectors for backlighting and the data from the Arduino. All those parts are then connected with standoff spacers. When all parts have been built, the inner structure gets assembled first and the whole package is then inserted into the hull. To align everything, the triangular key in the hull and the fitting slots on the plates are used. Here are now the real parts in comparison. First the 3D printed outer hull with the glass already in it. The faceplate with the lasered lettering. The needle with glued in shaft and the shaft coupler. The LED plate with LEDs and spacers. In the middle will be a tiny ball bearing to help the rotation of the shaft. The motor PCB with an X27 stepper already mounted. And finally the connector plate. Here all the parts in one picture again. The parts of the angle of attack indicator look quite similar, the main difference being that I'm using mini servos in those instruments. As you might have noticed, most of the parts from my instruments are designed in CAD and then 3D printed. This helps immensely keeping the parts well aligned. Of course it's possible to build everything by hand, but with the 3D printer it's so much easier to create things for the simulator, it's been a real game changer for me. I'm really lucky to have quite a fully equipped workshop and with the addition of a laser cutter, backlighted panels, face plates or indicators became an easy possibility. The part is printed in white or transparent PLA, spray painted with four coats of black paint and then the lettering is lasered out. I made the PCB for the X27 stepper motor at home with my desktop CNC, but this could of course also be edged or ordered at one of the many PCB makers. Once all parts are built, it's assembly time. When putting an instrument together, I'm feeling a bit like a watchmaker with all those tiny parts compared to the big cockpit.
It's quite a tedious process, but I think the final result is worth the time and sweat. Controlling those instruments is a topic of its own and I'm planning to make a detailed video about how I do it. Today I will just give a short overview of it. A very nice German guy called Hammer made a fantastic tool to interface with Falcon BMS called BMS AIT. It reads the data from BMS and can control a lot of different hardware through one or more Arduinos. And since the whole Arduino part is open source, you can easily program your own Arduino module if it's not supported yet. I already did this for my LED control chip and it worked perfectly. The concept is straightforward. You just tell the program which variables and data get sent to which Arduino and in the Arduino code you just take this data, work with it, modify it as you like and then use it to control your hardware. You can turn LEDs on or off or set the stepper motor to a specific position, for example for a needle or show some specific text on a display. DCS is also supported, but of course it's heavily focused on the F16 module. The link to Hammer's GitHub page is in the video description. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and got some motivation and help to build your own instruments. Thanks for watching!